the joint tenancy. Uh, joint tenancy a little bit different as two or more person for sure it can be married couple okay. and each of the owner everyone holds uh, equal interest right. you cannot define the percentage it's just equal every owner has the same right the whole right same right on this property Okay, next point, it must be created at the same time, not only the same time. In journal, we refer to PITT, is the possession, interest, time, and the title. Okay. Uh, remember I mentioned about the old father? Okay, normally, joint tenancy is created intentionally. Uh, for example, by the old father's uh, will, he want to create this uh, <coughs> for the kids. Okay, and <laughs> thereafter, anyone, anytime, they change any interest, they change any procession, they change anything in the D, the title, then they are no longer joint ten tenants. Okay, they break up the rule, then they become tenancy in common. Okay, that's the, <coughs> the graphic we just dem demonstrate. That's the important thing you need to remember. Okay, so number three is say, okay, <clears throat> it will terminate. Any new owner will become tenants in common. Okay, anything change, okay, anything not in the history, the old father, the one particular D or title at the time, say uh, 1999, okay, only the title created in 1999 okay anything after that anything change in the title it will no longer <coughs> uh, join tenancy it will be <coughs> uh, tenancy in common that's the, what it means Okay, number four is exactly say like uh, the example in the particular one time, uh, for example in 1999, this D this ownership was created. Okay, next important one is called survivorship. Okay, survivorship. Uh, in other words this joint tenancy, any any of the co-owner who died, then they are out of the game, they are out of the uh, <coughs> title. So until the, we also call last survivorship, until the last person who still survived, they hold the, the they hold the title in severity then it will become inheritable. And the nice part of it is the <coughs> law survivorship, they, they don't have to go through the probate court. They can escape from going through the probate court. Okay, uh, survivorship, there's a couple of things we mentioned here. It's undivided procession. Okay, everybody has the uh, same equal interest to the old party. So everyone holds undivided procession. Okay, uh, tenants common 
is you you hold it undivided, but it's fractional per, by percentage. Okay. Uh, uh, B says you cannot will. Okay, so unless you become the last survivorship, then you can write in your will. It's, it, so joint tenancy is not inheritable. Okay, tenants come and it's okay. You can write write a will. Okay, number three most important. Okay, again, is escape from probate court or uh, or maybe your spouse or your relative, your kids or your father's existing debts, your co-owners' existing debt. So that's important too. Okay, let's see more quick hint. Uh, in general, in national law, it says corporation and natural person cannot be joint tenant because the corporation never die. However, uh, I want to uh, remind you that uh, a lot of our uh, state exam or national law uh, it may not be 100% uh, in the real life. Okay, in, For this particular case, in real life, you, you still can have uh, <coughs> a natural person and the corporation, the legal entity, okay, as joint tenancy. Okay, number two, it can be married couple, so you don't need to go through probate court. Okay, number three, it was created at the same time or at one time in the one particular D. Okay, uh, we done about the uh, two major co-ownership of uh, tenants in common and joint tenancy. However, now uh, we want to take a look at by Mary Capo. of the uh, <coughs> co-ownership. The first one is most likely using in uh, nationwide because uh, in a lot of state, we are com com community property. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier, most likely we're using community property plus uh, the survivorship, okay? Which would be equal to tenancy by entirety. Okay, so what is tenancy by entirety? It's a joint tenancy. It's kind of a particular joint tenancy for married couple. Okay, so it, it it's about equal to community plus the survivorship. Okay, so it has the survivorship. So the <coughs> you will you will be uh, become the sole owner. Number three, you need to know uh, what sev they call severability, which means uh, even in joint tenancy, uh, one party cannot convey your, you know, although it's uh, equal, equally uh, interest or half interest, in other words, which means you have to have your co-owner uh, sign the consent agreement if you want to sell it you want to transfer it however in tenancy in common you don't have to have your co-owner to sign it okay number four 
uh, <coughs> for joint tenancy, everything you must have both party or your partner or your spouse co-owner to sign for the signature. And of course, it can be de de uh, terminated by divorce or death or by the court. Of course, it, it can be by the both parties' agreement. Okay, that's the tenancy by entirety. Okay, let's take a look at, I summarize here for the state exam question, uh, no need of probate court. How, how do you escape from the probate court? The first we talked about earlier, living trust or family trust by LLC. Okay, those two combination is uh, most popular and pretty powerful. Okay, or the second one you can create it with the survivorship. So in California, a lot of married couple they will <coughs> uh, create it such as uh, we purchased this as a community property with survivorship. Okay, in other words, it's almost equal tenants by entirety. It's a joint tenancy. It's about the same thing as joint tenancy. Okay, right here in California, we, we write it as a community property with survivorship. Okay, then uh, we need to understand uh, in community property, the state of com uh, California, uh, all the income, property, and the debts are subject to 50-50 equally. Okay. Uh, in Texas, they call uh, divide the debt and the assets. They call equitably. Okay. Yeah, equity, equitably, okay. something related to equity. Okay, now uh, let's see the community property. Uh, okay, in general, community property is uh, and the property that created uh, during your marriage status, legal marriage status, or let's say after you get married. Okay. However, uh, be careful when uh, you read the state exam question. Okay, if they say the couple is going go to the court or go to whatever where they want to uh, get married. Okay, so at that point they cannot create community property. They have to down all the legal pro process or proceeding. So anyway, as under legal marriage status, that the property created by default is the community property. So once it's created uh, as community property, uh, surviving spouse will acquire all the property. Okay. So which is uh, kind, kind of uh, unfair to the ch children, okay? Uh, regardless of number of children, children get nothing, okay? So that's why we have uh, in California most popular is community property with survivorship. Okay, then community property is the same thing that it must be signed by the both of the party. Okay, anything you 
change, you transfer, you convey the title, or there's an encumbrance. Encumbrance that can be if you want doing the mortgage or anything related to the title. It has to sign by both of the spouse. Okay. And uh, community property like a tenancy in common, you can write the will for your own portion of it. And of course, um, you can have your separate property uh, by a gift to uh, to your other spouse. Okay. Or on the other hand, if you want to create a separate property during your marriage status, okay, you can do that. Okay. However, you need to have your spouse sign the door right. Then you can purchase or create this property by separate property. Okay, now let's talk about separate property. Uh, in other words, when you were single, okay, uh, <clears throat> you earn the money, you purchase the property, uh, then after you get married, those property count as separate property. Okay. So separate property is just one nice part for the kids. It, uh, once you die, uh, the kids has half of the property and the survivor spouse has half of the property. Okay. And if you have uh, one kid, it will be equally shared by the surviving spouse and the children. Okay, if you have more kids, like two or more, then kids has more, two thirds of the property, and the surviving spouse has one third of it. Okay, that's for the separate property. Okay, let's. Uh, take another quick hint. Okay, so when survivor and spouse acquire all of it, okay, first, if with survivorship, okay, or second one, if survivor and spouse has no will. Number three, uh, if the spouse want to sign off the door right, okay. Uh, normally we we use in we call quick claim D. Okay, next, um, let's see um, when it will be acquired by either of the spouse. Okay, it's like a marriage or inheritable. And of course you can uh, give to somebody, to your spouse during the marriage or we can use in again, we can use in quick claim D. Okay, uh, last but not the least, uh, <clears throat> it's quite important you need to know. Um, not only as the state exam, okay, in real life, it's also quite important. Okay, in common law state, uh, for example, in California, we are common law state. 
So uh, <clears throat> we will go through a couple of core case. Uh, the first one we've been talking about the easement, Hender and, and Fisher's about the easement in the court. Okay, in chapter 10, we will talk about uh, broker's fiduciary duty is also by court. Okay, uh, you need to understand it's very important right in the uh, property known as Dover right. Okay, which means, uh, i like to remind you, although we can have the property as separate property, even, you know, after you get married, okay, or you already have separate property bef before you get married, okay. Uh, in other words, separate property is not 100% separate property, okay. Which is, uh, the second line is say, you know, his wife has certain very important right in the property known as Dover right. Okay, that's uh, very important in real life. You need to have understanding about the door right even in your separate property. <clears throat> Page 17. It's regarding about business organization that uh, be commonly used in uh, real estate business. Okay, the the first one is called partnership. Uh, uh, we can have as general partnership or limited partnership. Okay, general partnership. Uh, can be uh, more straightforward. Uh, two or more person, you can form a partnership. Uh, however, uh, it says that all the partner, uh, they par participate in the business operation and <clears throat> the management. So in other words, they are taking full liability altogether in other words, they are, all of them are the owners. They are not a stockholder. They are not just a share investor. Okay, uh, be the limited partnership. On the other hand, it's a little bit different. We had one uh, dedicated person called uh, general partner, okay. And this guy who take completely liable liability, okay. and then we can have uh, additional uh, <coughs> one or several limited partner. So this limited partner means they are only investor, something like they are only investor. They don't actually do in the uh, business operation management, okay? So in other words, their liability only to the parts of the certain amount of money they invested. Once the corporation uh, filed bankruptcy, they, they just lose uh, their <coughs> investment of the certain amount of money, that's all. They take no additional liability to against their personal, the owned other of the property or <coughs> assets. Okay, that's a, a limited partnership. Okay, so in general, uh, the general partner in a brokerage system, it can be the broker 
or the owners okay, who take all the liabilities. Okay, then uh, next one we call corporation. Okay, I, in uh, real estate business, the corporation is a legal entity who can uh, own the real estate by severalty. Okay. And normally, uh, the corporation was operated by board director or so-called president, whatever. And then all other investors uh, is like a shareholder. They they only liable to loss of the money they invest, the amount of <coughs> their investment. However, the corporation there's a disadvantage. Uh, uh, is subject to like a double taxation. Okay. Uh, in real life, the corporation, there's a S corp and C corp. Okay, C corp. Is, in general, is a larger corporation. Say like Microsoft for sure. Uh, there will be <coughs> C Corp. And S Corporation is more act as LLC for smaller business, which has a benefits as a corporation. Okay. So, most most important for the tax point of view, say like uh, Microsoft, they earn uh, 10 billion. Okay. They have to have uh, uh, file the federal tax first before they give the profit to their employee or their uh, shareholders. And then those shareholder or the owner, they have to file tax again. So that's works sort of as double taxation. That's what they mean. However, if you has as a S corporation, even by yourself, you can have all the expenses deduction. Okay, then. Uh, most likely, you can have either uh, monthly pay like by W two, or you can do it at end of the year. You file as profit sharing. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> if you file as profit sharing, it, it won't have a double taxation. Okay, that's the major difference between S corporation and C corporation in terms of the taxation. However, there's another uh, important thing you need to know. Uh, maybe you will need it in the future. That is when you create a corporation, you need to think about your corporation will be only within the United States, okay, or uh, <coughs> the U.S. permanent resident or citizen, okay, because the S corporation, IRS intended it created for the benefit of the United States permanent resident or citizen only. So in other words, if you have investor from outside of the United States, from abroad, the foreigner who do not have the permanent resident, then you cannot create a C corporation. 
Uh, I'm sorry, you cannot create S corporation. Okay. Okay, next, uh, syndicate and joint venture, uh, which is not that important for us right now for taking state exam. Uh, anyway, syndicate is more like uh, people to run in a company to doing operate on a real estate investment for a larger investment together. We can create so-called syndicate. And joint venture is more like for a single business project. We have like a joint venture. Okay, uh, we don't talk too much about syndicate and joint venture because it's less related to the state exam. And uh, in the future, uh, future down the road, when your business getting uh, stronger and stronger, you have larger customer base. If you need to do some sort of related to the larger project or to <coughs> uh, form uh, join together for a uh, uh, real estate investment, uh, still you need to consult with your accountant or maybe uh, real estate attorney, how do you do that? How do you create it? It's more complicated related to accountant and the attorney's point of view. Okay, last part, LLC is uh, most familiar to <coughs> most of the people that's a limited liability company, uh, which like I say, is uh, <coughs> it provides you the best protection Okay, for your, uh, <clears throat> for for your uh, personal property, or or the real property. Okay. Okay. Uh, last, let's take a quick hint. Okay, how did you own uh, the real property by severalty? Uh, probably the two way. Okay, the first one we call sole proprietor by natural person. Okay, you can. Or the second one, the corporation is a legal entity. Okay, those two types, those two uh, person, it can hold the real property by severalty. Okay, next, uh, California brokerage. Uh, in general, Department of Real Estate, they, they only take us the sole proprietor, which means if you are a broker, you run in your business alone by yourself. Okay, you probably create a sole proprietor and the corporation. If and second, secondly, California has a franchise tax, as uh, roughly like eight hundred dollars. Okay, uh, number three, the corporation you own the property, you can own by your ownership's name. Okay, uh, this is an example uh, in the real life. <coughs> uh, in most likely in like a uh, Nevada, Nevada, they uh, before in year of two thousand and eight, the, there's a lot of people file bankruptcy. They they lose their houses. So there's a okay uh, a group of attorney they forms <clears throat> the, 
those kind of company, they are they're working on so-called HOA liens. <coughs> Excuse me. So you might heard that oh I can I can buy a house in uh, <coughs> Las Vegas for three thousand five thousand. Okay. However, that's not true. Okay. Uh, the truth is, you purchase an HOA lien. It's not purchase a house. But some people they don't understand. But at a critical time, uh, there's some people they make money on that. They call HOA lien. Okay, LLC, last LLC, okay. Uh, you may not have probate required, however, you, you bear in the liability. Okay, that's all for uh, chapter three. Okay.